Today we're going to demonstrate lifting concrete slabs using polyurethane. And then we're going to do some void filling. Before we can start injecting polyurethane underneath the slabs to lift them, you have to understand a little bit about polyurethane. Although this isn't a chemistry class, it helps you understand what's going to be happening under the slab. Polyurethane is really a liquid, two liquids, part A and part B. When you put them together, you get a chemical reaction. That chemical reaction has two effects. One is heat, and the second is expansion. For help you to help you visualize what's going to happen under the slab, my buddy Jesse is going to mix up some of our two-pound foam right here. This two, we have multiple foams for multiple applications. This particular foam is ideal for residential work. It's a two-pound foam. Its characteristics are it will set up in 10 to 15 seconds, depending on the temperature. It will skid over, which mitigates the probability of locking slabs together. And it will end up with a product that's got a PSI of 30. Now, please visualize. It gets injected and mixed at the tip of a gun, injected as a liquid underneath the slab. The chemical reaction happens and that is what lifts your concrete. It is not the force of the injection. To be repetitive, it goes under as a liquid, spreads out, sets up and lifts your concrete like a pillow from underneath, mitigating the probability of cracking the slab. All right guys, I was walking through World of Concrete when I came across a demonstration on how to raise sunken concrete using foam. Now I did ask about sand jacking and mud jacking and I was it was explained to me that this was a much cleaner, better, safer process, but I don't know a whole lot about it. So I'm going to just show you the demonstration and also let you know that these guys actually offer classes on how to raise sunken concrete. They teach you how to price it out and they'll actually go out to a job site and walk you step by step through the process, which is probably a lot better than I could do for you. So because whenever I raise sunken concrete, it always comes out in little teeny tiny pieces and ends up in the back of a dump truck because that's not my area of expertise. So let's get back into the demonstration. Okay, now we understand what's gonna be happening. So let's lift some concrete. We follow a process called drill, pump, patch. Kip here is gonna drill a five eighth inch hole in this slab. The 5 8 inch hole is an important issue, it's not minor. Historically with system, concrete repair systems like slab jacking or mud jacking, they drilled 1 and 5 8 inch holes, and they had to drill a lot of them, because you're driving a slurry underneath the concrete under pressure. That slurry had a tendency to cone, because it wouldn't spread, and therefore it created pressure in the concrete, increasing the probability of cracking it. Polyurethane goes under as a liquid. Smaller holes are required, and less holes. Therefore, a less obtrusive job, especially if you're doing a residential environment where you're doing a pool deck, a patio, a walkway, or somebody's driveway. Okay, Kip has put a zert inside the hole. The zert is nothing more than an injection port. It's got a check valve in it. That prevents the setup of the polyurethane to come back into his gun. He's now attached a patented HMI Elite One gun to the zert. He has created, therefore, an air purge system. Is that important? It's critical. Air purge system means that gun is perpetually driving air through that hole. As he is injecting and after he injects and even after the material sets up, that leaves a small wormhole perpetually in it so he can keep injecting more material without re-drilling the hole. That allows him to feather in a little bit of polyurethane, wait 10 to 15 seconds, let it set up, see the movement, and keep injecting. Now this is the world of concrete. It's not the real world. This is a one hole demo. Kip is injecting in one hole. If it was the real world, he'd probably have three or four zerts on that slab. And because that hole always remains open, he can keep moving the gun from hole to hole, controlling the pitch and the angle of the lift. 
that allows him to match joints to eliminate trip hazards and pitch a slab away from the foundation for drainage, whatever the purpose of the job is. How you doing down there? Starting to move. The slab is starting to move. He is controlling the lift, by the way, with the fingers of his hand. He will feel that slab move before you see it move. He's probably going to try to get it to come up about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. He's got to make this concrete last till Friday. How far are you up? Not bad. I'm good. He's up at an eighth of an inch. He's going to declare victory on his lift. And he moves on to the last part of the process. Remember I said drill, pump, patch. He merely removes his gun from the Zerg, pulls his Zerg out, and then patches his hole with a little mix of Portland with sand. And he's done. He has corrected the problem. And instead of ripping the slab, re-pouring a new slab, he has in a matter of minutes corrected the problem and done the repair. Highly efficient, very, very profitable. And for the property owner, incredibly efficient because usually the cost is one half the cost of the replacement. Polyurethane concrete lifting, tremendous addition to your existing business as an additional profit service. Now let's talk about void filling. I think everybody's attention to this here. We all came to the world of concrete to learn about what's new. We broke this product to the market yesterday. This is brand new. This is called fill foam. The word speaks for itself. It is for void filling. What are you filling? Mines, culverts, tunnels, abandoned tanks, wells, abandoned wells, pipes, sinkholes, backfilling excavation around foundation with a material that's very low cost and adds no additional weight to the environment for burden. Now, this is not a polyurethane, it is a resin-based foam. What does that mean? Well, it's got different characteristics. The most important one, it has no heat whatsoever. So all the issues of a lot of material being flown in generating heat are gone. It is very flowable. Literally, this material will flow for a mile. So if you're filling a pipe, as an example, you fill at one point and it will follow that pipe for a mile. We filled that covert pipe right there up in, in a couple minutes. To give you some visualization of how fast this happens, we're going to mix them up in the trailer. You'll be able to see how it flows because it will come through a pipe. It will go through that hose. You get to set the density of this foam at the, at, at the job site by dialing in whether you want 10 or 55 PSI. That will also affect the speed of the setup. And as you see, Jay has actually started with Chris to fill that tank. To give you some idea of the scale potential here, our larger equipment setups will allow you to pump up to 60 cubic yards per hour with this material. So if you're doing a large project like a mine shaft or an abandoned well, it's a very fast, efficient, and highly profitable service. It is also fire retardant. You came here to learn new ways to make money. What I tried to introduce to you to is systems, materials that can allow you to add different services to your businesses. I hope I've tickled some thoughts. In the meantime, I want to thank you for stopping by HMI. Let us scan your card and you'll have a wonderful world of concrete. Paul, can I ask you a couple questions? Is there, if a guy wants to learn more about doing this and how to price it out and charge it and get more information, where would they go? You want to ask it again? Yeah, so if a guy wanted more information on how to price this out, kind of they wanted to actually look at actually taking this on inside of their own industry or their own business, where would they go? What would they do? They go to hmicompany.com. We run seminars around the country every month. No obligation, just come to the seminar, run all the equipment, let us help you develop your own business plan, your marketing plan, then make your decision. So you'll teach the guys hands-on how to actually do this. And then they make an invest evaluation for the potential of their market. And you'll teach them how to price it out. Absolutely, part of the whole, whole program is estimating and pricing, which varies around the country based on the alternatives. I was gonna say, because in California, the guys can charge three, four, five times more than they can in Michigan. Absolutely, a lot of the impact of the pricing opportunity is a function of the alternative service provider. So pricing for flat work in California is much different than Central Nebraska. So how long does it take to master something like this? That's a great question. Our 
account managers generally find that after a customer has formed about 20 projects, they got it. Well, what about trying to get to the 20 projects stage? That's got to be a little nerve-wracking, right? Our account managers actually deliver the equipment and work with you for a day or more until you're comfortable. So they'll, take, they'll go out to the guy's job site, hold their hand and walk them step by step through their very first project? Absolutely, not only that, you gotta remember something that no matter what, every project is completely different. There's no two lifts that are exactly the same. If you ever walk up to a project you're uncomfortable, take out your smartphone, take the photo, text it over to your account manager, they will tell you where to drill the holes and approximately how much you need to put in. Shut up. Shut the front door. All right, thanks Paul. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, here's the deal you got. And this video is not sponsored. I just thought it was cool.